And it's time now for the business news. And Nicholas Poynton joins us in the studio. Hi, Nicholas. Hello. Hey, service industry. You telling me that it seems to be on the rebound. What are the numbers? So on Friday, we got the numbers out of the manufacturing sector. And today, we finally got the June data for the services sector. And this is coming out of the BNZ Business New Zealand Performance of Services Index, which rose to 54.1 points. So that's up about oh, over 16.5 points. And just remember, any reading above 50 signals expansion, anything below contraction. So we've been in contraction really since lockdown. But uh, things improved markedly over the month of June, and we've seen our highest, uh, the ind- index rose to its highest point since January. And this was driven by new orders and a surge in sales. And this coincided with strong electronic card sales and house prices in June. And a lot of this is indicative of pent up demand. You know, if you think about lockdown, a lot of us weren't really buying or doing anything. Our wallets well, we grew. We couldn't go anywhere, could well, we? There we could. Yeah, no, we couldn't. So our wallets grew fatter and we came out of lockdown and people have just been buying. So while this lift is really good news, we need to bear in mind we're coming off a very low base. You know, rec- we're talking record lows in the, in the months of April and May. And there's been this trend with a lot of the business indicators that we monitor from month to month that the June numbers just tend to look amazing because it's coming off such a, uh, such, such a low base. And that just captures, and, and, and all the June data really just captures the time we spent out of lockdown. Yeah, and we don't know if that will be sustained through the coming months. No, no, we don't. And unfortunately, like the manufacturing index numbers that came out on Friday, the employment indicator is also in contraction, down to about 45.1. Firms are still shedding staff, and this is expected to get worse when wage, when the wage subsidy dries up in September, like you were saying. So while these June numbers are good, it does, does little to really rectify the massive drop in GDP we expect to see in the second quarter. Yes. But just to finish up on a bit of a bright spot with this one, if we compare ourselves ourselves to other countries, we're second to only China in our service sector index. So we're ahead of the US, the UK, the Eurozone, Japan, and our closest neighbour, Australia. That's interesting. Okay, so the ANZ Bank, it reckons it's dishing out a lot of money to support businesses through this pandemic. Have they given us numbers? How much? Yeah, so the country's biggest bank has not been afraid to lend during the COVID-19 pandemic. So today I went to the China Business Summit and there right. the, the ANZ CEO Antonio Watson talked up and talked through the bank's response to the pandemic. So despite critics saying that, you know, banks have been quite tight with their money, Watson wanted to wanted it to be known that ANZ has responded, especially with this new wave of cheap money that's come through by a lot of the measures that's been taken by the Reserve Bank. And they've been willing to lend to the tune of seven billion dollars of new loans. Uh, since since lockdown. And Watson said to me after she gave a keynote address that this is about normal levels, really. So she said the bank has taken a number of, number of steps to really help businesses and people uh, since since lockdown through the worst of the pandemic, through, through the pandemic. And she said one is for the thousands of people who've really been feeling the pinch. And the bank made adjustments to $11 billion worth of loans to help ease that pressure. And bef- what do they, do they mean in, when they say that they made adjustments to that level of loans? Are they talking about mortgages as well, but giving people holidays and, exactly. and things like that? All, right. the, all these types of things. And I mentioned that $7 billion before. About $2 billion of this went to business businesses. And Tony Watson said that a lot of, a lot of businesses are hesitant at the, moment, at the moment about taking on new debt because there's just so much uncertainty, right? So, yeah. Um, but, but for some companies, it was their last resort. But the bank has been really prudent. You know, they've been really careful about who they decide to lend money to. And I guess the information that, you know, Antonio Watson's talking about sort of reiterates what we've heard from a lot of the banking sector, especially a lot of experts, that going into the lockdown, the banks were in a pretty strong position. You know, they had the capital uh, in, in the reserves. They had the liquidity that wasn't really available to them during the GFC. You know, they, they had that money tucked, aw- tucked yeah. away coming into this. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting sign to hear what's coming out of her, but uh, what, she, what she was saying. But I think if there's one more little thing I could add that really took my interest, it was the fact that um, Antonio Watson said that uh, clients have used about 30% of their undrawn facility. So think of that okay. as like your overdraft. So she said that, you know, a lot of uh, businesses and clients haven't really been tapping into that. So they've because, got a bit in reserve, 70% they've got, they've in got, reserve. They've got about a 70% in reserve, and that's because of all those government measures. So we can probably, I'll be keeping a close eye on this in the coming months, but I'll be really interested to see what happens to those withdrawn facilities as those Subsidies measures and begin things. to roll off. Yeah, understand. Okay, so what was going on on the markets today, Nicholas? So today the NZX top 
50 closed down just under a third of a percent by 31 points to 11,553. The New Zealand dollar is steady at 65.5 US cents, 93.8 Australian, and just up under two thirds of a percent to 52 British pence. Okay, thanks very much. That's Nicholas Poynton with our business wrap.